An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on. It's an idea. It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. A certain way. Critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, we egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect, short time and gilded style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be new to the fullest. conscious conversation with you Dave about divine feminine stuff and how we can really uh, help women understand how to connect to their divine feminine essence and how to wield that healthfully and to to do it in such a way where they're not becoming like a toxic feminine okay like we could talk about SJWs we could talk about trauma we can talk about um Let's talk about just how people can go down healthier roads in the mental health department and not suffer as much when it comes to their mental problems that they're having with themselves. Um, oh, well, in terms of I'm, self-judgment, any issues that they're having like that stem from like anxiety or depression. Okay, um, I don't, I don't know if you've watched the video yet. I, I know you will allow it on your timeline, but, um, Paul Joseph Watson, um, just did, um, a really good, um, video about, um, the link between physical health and, uh, mental health, and obviously to people like us, it's kind of like a well done, no shit kind of, kind of, yeah. but, you know, for most people, it's either this, like, you know, amazing light bulb of revelation that suddenly they realize they res resonate with, like, wow, I never realized that before. Or or people, you know, the, the more uh, people trapped in mental illness are like, oh, that's not based in reality. One's got nothing to do with the other. My only mm -hmm. response for them is science, bitches, you know. Um, <laughs> and Paul Joseph Watson, you know, it's just, he was just, you know, showing how, like, all of these uh, mentally ill SJ, SJW people that do just this asinine shit, like, you look at them, and they're, they're practically clones. Um, you know, they're, 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 they are very physically unhealthy, and, you know, they act in the same ways, and they're, they're, they're just, they, they all look like train wrecks, you know? Now, I'm not trying to be mean. Please, no bully. But why do they always... Look the same. You know what I'm talking about. The staunch Remainer and Jeremy Corbyn fan that threw a milkshake on Nigel Farage. Which is a banana and uh, salted caramel. The resemblance is uncanny. The left wing activist who said that milkshakes weren't enough and that Farage should be acid attacked. Can I just ask what you're against this much? No, you can't. Piss off. The vape store employee who had a hissy fit over a Trump supporter. Get it's out! Like, oh, help your customer! Fuck off! Fuck off! Ah! That screaming woman at Trump's inauguration. <laughs> The unhinged New York professor who urged violence against Trump supporters. The woman who harassed a Hispanic Trump supporter in a post office for wearing a MAGA hat. People on the street because I'm wearing a hat Look at with a Trump. You. Abortion activists. I love Satan, so f*** you. Why fucking privileged racist fucking male that doesn't stand for women's rights? Get the fuck out of here, fuck dipshit, and get that camera out of my face. This. Person. My favorite amateur historian. This woman. The rebel is a racist source of news. The Seattle coffee goblin. Yeah, I can't even talk. Look at you. <laughs> hey, this is what. See that? 
<laughs> Every man over the age of 20 who bought a Nintendo Switch. They've all got that look. It's a look that transcends genders and even age groups. It's just so distinct. I remember. Yes. Yeah. 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 Please. Please. Fucking terrible person. Please. You're a terrible person. A thrown milkshake is an act of protest. You want violence? We can get violent. We can throw bricks at these Nazi fucks or grenades like we did in the 40s. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be storming the beaches, love. Is it just that weirdos on any political fringe are generally speaking scruffy losers who have no regard for their physical health or their appearance? Or is there something more specific about lefties that gives them that passive-aggressive, open-mouthed, smiley-yet-terrified, beta new male presence? Overweight, bad dressers, balding, short-sighted, sometimes ginger, always angry. <laughs> Always conducting themselves with this vehement, over-the-top, moral, high-ground attitude, despite having no morals. Maybe they're trying to look like hipsters. This would actually make sense, because as studies have shown, that's literally the most conformist, non-unique persona you could possibly inhabit. But because, at least in the case of the men, they've got such low energy as a result of deficient testosterone levels, combined with an inherent revulsion to any kind of personal responsibility, it's like their NPC hipster coding has failed, and they've had to settle for some kind of neck-beard mongrel-like halfway house. Also, I don't want to revive a dead meme. But the soy thing just keeps coming up. So this Antifa supporter who owns a brewery in the UK tweeted that he'd like to see his customers smash bricks over people's heads for having a different opinion, in the process completely ruining his business's reputation. After openly inciting violence, the idiot then whined about getting a mean email. Boo hoo! So I looked through his Twitter history and found this. He's tweeting at Alpro. Demanding to know why his soy milk tastes of vanilla. Their milkshake really does bring all the soys to the yard. Alpro, why does your soy milk taste of vanilla? Is it flavoured? Have to say it's not really conducive to making cauliflower teas. Be gone from me, you soy boy beta cock. Be gone! Why always the soy? Why are there so many children of the quorn? I did a whole video on this. Far left opinions always seem to correlate with soy consumption. Walking down the street, spot the soylent truck, now I'm drinking a sweet chai breakfast. Soy consumption, soy face. Soy consumption, soy face. Soy consumption, soy face. I mean, there are other alternatives to cow's milk. Almond milk? Oat milk? Coconut milk? Why do they always choose soy? It's like it's some kind of signalling device to other soy boys. Why always soy? Soy boy! I mean, when there's tweet after tweet of these weaklings complaining about not being strong enough to open a plastic bottle of Soylent, when does the meme become reality? Stop. Being. A. Soy boy! And I'm not saying that every man has to conform to some idealised muscle-bound, hyper-masculine stereotype. But when mainstream culture rushes to the defense of new males who weep over shitty Star Wars trailers, something's gone drastically wrong. There's also science to back up the claim that men with low testosterone tend to smile more. That's why they're always doing this. According to the Journal of Nonverbal Behavior, in a study of possible links between testosterone and dominance, 119 men and 114 women provided saliva samples for testosterone assay and posed smiling and not smiling for portrait photographs. Expert judges viewing the photographs found smaller smiles amongst high than low testosterone men, with less zygomatic major raising the corners of the mouth and orbicularis oculi raising the cheeks and crinkling around the corners of the eyes muscle activity. It's the contorted glory hole grimace of fear, the chimp-like gesture of asexual submission to more dominant males. Increased plastic phthalates in food are also making men tired, flabby and impotent. And by extension, left wing. It's a conspiracy, man. There's a clear correlation between being ugly and being left wing. I mean, even The Guardian admitted to this. A study published in the Journal of Public Economics found that more attractive individuals are more likely to identify as conservative. Previous research found that those who are good looking are generally treated better, achieve higher social status and earn more money. Maybe it all does just come down to the fact that left wing beliefs are predicated 
on a lack of personal responsibility and a lack of self-discipline. That's why there's hardly ever any left-wing gym bros. Maybe it is just the revenge of the losers who were bullied by the more popular kids at school. The problem is, culture and society is giving them power to run our lives. And nothing could be more dangerous than that. Because these people never grew up. They're still children. And they think they can recreate the coddled utopia of childhood so long as they throw enough temper tantrums. Unfortunately for us, it seems the revolution will be pasteurized. Oh, We've given whiny, privileged, passive-aggressive, emotionally incontinent wrecks who think that everything should take second place to their relentless fragility the power to silence, censor, dehumanize, and violently attack perceived thought criminals with little consequence and with open endorsement from cultural institutions and the media. The cult of inclusivity is a race to the bottom for humanity. We all end up having to cater to the sensibilities of self-victimized man-babies. If you want a vision of the future, imagine a soy milkshake carrying shrieking blob stamping on the enlightenment principles of Western civilization while making this face forever. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just really, you know, this this really interesting how you can how you can visibly see that that most of that most I won't even say all like there you know there's your occasional like really hot looking SJW um, <laughs> it does happen. That's very interesting because I noticed that I went when the last time that I was like really concentratedly around a lot of SJW energy in person was when I was at the Planned Parenthood clinic in in Oregon. And I noticed that a lot of the women that I was surrounded by were like these very, very, very much so social justice warrior type people, um, you know, LBGTQ rights, you know, like well, feminism, blah, blah, blah. Like, like I have contraceptives, power to birth control, you know, like that kind of vibe, like yeah. Betty Friedan kind of like that, that kind of energy. Yeah, and yeah. I, it was interesting they laughed at me when i told them the type of birth control that i was switching to which by the way i have now had a year on using the daisy fertility monitor and i have been loving it it has not i haven't had an unplanned pregnancy i haven't had any problems like this is 100 percent natural and it's just based on knowing your cycle and knowing what times are safe for you to have sex and fuck. and it doesn't fuck with your hormones. It's just all about learning about your cycle, and and it's it's a really empowering thing to know as a woman to really also understand how it relates to your health. Like the other reason I got this was because it showed me the regularity of my periods. And as a person who's had PCOS and as a person who's had problems with. Um, my hormones like this is so empowering to see that yes in fact like all the things that I'm doing for my body are in fact working because I'm having regular periods and I am having normal cycles and it's awesome yeah. so and, and yeah. like with, with me paradigmally I'm you know I, I'm I'm you know one of these um what, one of these uh, one of these weirdos that as usual when a, when a debate is split into two sides I firmly disagree with both sides because I have a complete third perspective um, for me when it comes to the abortion issue I can say that honestly I was about to ask I am, you, what do you think I, about it I am I am neither pro nor anti-abortion because I think that the the whole issue is a is a dichotomy like i you know i believe uh, i am i am anti women using abortion as a as a contraceptive substitute that does damage um to their uterus it does damage to overall health and and i am very very pro the awareness of hey if people realize that the raise in abortion is directly um correlative to the raise in physical unhealth and subsequently um, mental illness, then you realize that abortion is something to only do in emergency circumstances. And that when something like abortion becomes trendy, 
and justified. That is indicative of a mental illness. So I can't say I'm anti-abortion because there are some instances in which, yes, you know, for the safety of the mother, for whatever else that like, you know, in those extreme minority circumstances that like, yeah, you know, like you've got to do that. Um, and, I also and so I am not, so I am, I, I'm not, I'm not anti or pro I'm, I'm pro take personal responsibility. Yeah. Okay. So I noticed that there's a lot of women out there who are really pro abortion, but they, and they, they really want to be able to use it as a contraceptive, you know, like I can, I'm getting that undercurrent of energy from it, but they're using the argument of, well, what if it's like, well, they, then they, they cite the arguments of this extreme minority cases of the extreme rare emergencies where women have issues in the emergency room and it would kill them if they had the baby. You know what I mean? Like, or, or if like having, having the baby would kill the mother, you know, like if it growing in the mother's body was like malnourishing her or I don't know, like there's so many different circum circumstances that, you know, I've, I've heard people cite. But it's just like that. I don't think that those circumstances should be used to justify using it as a contraceptive, though, if it is made. Um, if it were to be made legal, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, there, there's only there's only two instances where where I can see it as being valid um, when the mother is in mortal danger or like when a teenage girl gets uh, gets raped and the experience of having the kid and all that is going to like mentally fuck him up for life um like you know rare situations like that which are extremely rare like the rape train is not as big as social justice warriors like to make it out we do not live in a rape culture we live in an outrage culture if anything we do not live in a rape culture you know uh, uh, rape uh, uh, you know as you know, even as much more common these days as rape might be than in certain other days, it is still overall not incredibly absolutely common. Like, you know, grab a hundred women at random off the street and ask them, hey, have you ever been raped? And you'll either get one say yes or none say yes. You know what I mean? It's like, it is not this, like, being raped is not, like, this totally dominating, like, oh, my God, you know, six out of seven women get raped. You know, it's not this huge epidemic that social justice warriors make it out to be. Yes, it does happen to some people. It really sucks when it happens. My heart goes out to those people. It's a raw deal. It sucks. I can't even imagine what it would be like physically, emotionally, or mentally, or in any other way to get raped, like, that it's absolutely terrible when it happens, and I'm definitely not, not in favor of rape, I'm not supporting rape, or being an apologist for rape, but it happens way, 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 infinitely less often than these silly-ass uh, SJW mentally ill types, uh, you know, make it out to be, and so that's, like, another issue, like, they use to push it, like, what about when women get raped and they're teenage girls and going through the trauma of having the kid and then having to, to give it up is going to cause them so much mental distress. It might put them at risk of being suicidal, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, those instances are valid, It's just, it feels like it's extreme. That is. Oh, they're exciting these things and it feels really extremist and they're puffing up these kinds of things to distract from the fact that Oh, well, man, I just went to this party last weekend and I fucked this guy and it's okay. Like he got me pregnant, but I had this abortion, you know, like I've had, I've heard way more of those stories about abortions than like, oh my God, my uncle raped me and I'm pregnant now. <laughs> like yeah. I'm, I'm going to have the baby and if I am, have the baby, it's going to fuck me up for life. So I'm going to get an abortion, you know? Yeah. I, I mean, uh, it's, it's just like, I think abortion should be legal, but I think there should be restrictions on, you know, what qualifies, you know. Um, if yes. someone is irresponsible and sleeping around, then, hey, if you want an abortion, you pay for it out of your own pocket. Fuck you. You're the one being completely irresponsible. 
And if you have the kid and you can't afford to keep the kid, that's what adoption's for, you know. Not to say that foster homes are wonderful or anything or all these, you know, adoption centers and whatever. Those are a fucking, you know, globalist Wall Street scumbag run pedophile operation. And it, it sucks <laughs> that the kids even have to end up in those places. But, you know, it's better than death. <laughs> but, you know, it's and another thing people need to realize is that and you know, there's fundamentalists that'll argue with me on this, but whatever. In that, I guess it's it's referred to the first term of pregnancy, whatever technical name of, uh, that it is, when the thing growing inside of you is nothing but a clump of cells. Um, I think if an abortion is going to happen, that should be the legal ground, when it's nothing but a clump of cells. But once it starts developing into an organism, then you're committing infanticide. And recently there was a law passed in New York that a woman can have the baby all the way up until till the point of actually giving birth and then decide at the time that that's when she wants the abortion and then the baby gets injected with something and killed. What? Yeah. And, and this law creates so much cognitive dissonance that most people refuse to believe it, even though it's in front of their face. You bring that up in front of most people, and they're like, no, no, no. They're, they're only talking about when if the mother is in an, an extreme emergency, and it's like, no, those laws already existed. You don't need a new law for that. That already existed. Oh, yeah, it's real psycho. Like, in my opinion... That shit is like the illegal or organ harvesting that we all know but can't absolutely prove that Planned Parenthood is doing. Um, you know, that's black market organ harvesting fucking shit. And, you know, it's, it's really disgusting. And it creates so much cognitive dissonance. Most people don't even want to accept it. And it's just like, look, look at the, the videos from when they, they were in session and talking about it and, and decided – you know, to pass this legislation, look at the legislation itself, look at what it says, just fucking look at it, and, you know, know the, know the forest from the trees here, look at it in its own terms, as it's being presented, as the presenters of it are speaking for themselves, look at that shit, you'll see what it is, people do not want to look at that, they just go, no, no, they would never do that, it's the whole it can't happen here attitude, Oh, well, well, the Third Reich was something in the past. This is America. It can't happen here, you know. And when you have an it can't happen here attitude, that's going to guarantee that it happens here. Because that's what the it can't happen here attitude does. It makes it so people get um, mentally and emotionally lazy and they stop being vigilant. And that is just, just creating a, 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 a ripe environment for psychopaths and ass clowns and all sorts of scum to just sneak in and take over, and then by the time everybody realizes that it's too late, you know, um, that's it's just nasty. People don't even want to look at it. Like, they don't want to think that the systems that they blindly worship as their god, that their god could betray them. That's what most people don't realize either, that, you know, people, they think they're Christian, they think they're Muslim, they think they're Jews, they think they're atheists. No, their god is human authority. That's, that is their tried and true God that they worship unwaveringly to the point that if anybody says that their God is committing a crime against them, oh no, that's blasphemy. That's fake news. Get that away. People worship this as their God, human authority. And now, of course, there's all different human authorities, which is why we have so much culture clash. You know, um, people who worship one human authority don't agree with the people that worship an entirely different human authority, and so there's a clash. But everybody's got that same addiction, worship of human authority. So, oh yeah, people call themselves Christians, they call themselves Jews, they call themselves Muslims, they call themselves atheists, they call themselves New Agers, they call themselves whatever they call themselves, but haha, the God they really worship is human authority, and that's that's where I call bullshit every time. It's like, nope. Your, your virtue signal God is not your God. Your God is human authority, and the proof is in society itself. 
Society would not be constructed as it is if society's God wasn't human authority. Because the way society is constructed is literally the altar, the sacrificial altar to the God of human authority. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist, it doesn't take a leap of logic to see it. It only takes having one ounce of compassion. That's all it takes, one little tiny ounce. You don't even need an abundance of it. So most people don't even have an ounce. Wow. That's profound, Dave. An ounce, that's all it takes. Huh? Just an ounce, that's all it takes. Yeah, just an ounce. Woo! After these messages, we'll be right back. Whoa, looks like you got a bit of a tangle in your dangle. Did you know that more than 8 out of 10 hose owners die each year? Oh, Not anymore! Hey, turn me on and watch my hose get huge! My mom always told me I was a grower, not a shower, and boy was she right! And if you squeeze me in the right spot, all my raging fluids will come flying out of me, and instantly I'll retract to my small, natural, convenient size. Amazing! Oh, yep. Shout out to all my flowers and growers out there. And just like a real snake, it can contract and expand like an accordion. You know, we really wanted to name it the Snake Hose, but that's the title of a gay porno. I mean, I I've never seen it, but, uh, eh, Lizard's close enough. This is my next-door neighbor, Sharon. She didn't know I was filming her. She also didn't know I had my hose in my hand, too. If your hose weighs more than 15 pounds, I feel sorry for you. You see, women prefer light, dainty, petite hoses. You don't want to be walking around with a big honking nanner. Oh, Sharon! Whoa, watch the whoa, whoa, don't get it caught on the thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, buddy, watch where you're going. You, gotta, whoa, whoa. you don't want to end up like that guy still using a standard hose, not going anywhere, and he's fucking bald. Fuck! Look at my hose, people. Oh, yeah, it's growing fast, and it's not kinking up anytime soon. Now, I don't know who lives here, but it's time to wake up. Behold, the full length and girth of my hose and its full through. potential. Hey, can't you see I'm filming a commercial here, you fucking asshole? Wah! Take that, fuck boy! No one fucks with my hose! The lizard hose is about 30 bucks, you get 25 feet. That's like, uh, just a little bit more than a dollar per foot. Now, yeah, fuck it, we'll give you two. That's 50 feet. Get fucked. Come on, touch it! And just like a real snake, it can, can ugh. It can contract it, it, it can, it, it can contract. Fuck. Omelets are delicious, aren't they? Ugh, fuck. But they're just so difficult to make, and they make a mess, you flip it over and blech, burnt. Egg crust, fucking no thank you. Omelet Express, please excuse my pubic hair covered arms, and behold, these exquisite omelets I created in just seconds. Oh fuck, I can't believe this omelet's already done. Slammed my dick in there so many times, but never in the bowl. You know why? Because it's for fucking omelets. You just gotta crack an egg right there in that groove and then you bend it over and beat it off. Fuck, man, I just love making omelets. Don't put your head inside a microwave while it's still on, folks. I'm a professional. Go ahead and put your face right up to the glass and watch as the mild radiation surrounds the bowl. My doctor says I do it too much, so now my brain don't work so good. But hey, just look at all these omelets I'm making. Bell pepper barf omelets. Brocco turd omelets. Spicy fiesta de culo omelets. What's that? You don't like omelets? Well, how about some rubbery scrambled eggs? Dog food and lawn trimmings. My arm hair. And my favorite, beets, gummy bears, and ham. You can whisk it, cook with it, clean it, clean it. <laughs> Too many eggs will clog your hole, but we're gonna include this thing so you can pry your ass open. Absolutely free! And you can take it from me, I like to shove things up my ass all the time. I'm not gay, I just love omelets. <laughs> How much for this microwavable bowl? $14.99. But wait, there's more. We're gonna give you two bowls and two copies of the same recipe book and a whisk. Looks like you're gonna have to get two microwaves. If you love the taste of a nice hard rubbery omelet, then order an Omelette Express right now. For the last year, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works has been working closely with the Russians to develop the most sophisticated, advanced, efficient, 
and state-of-the-art anti-terrorism drone weapon ever conceived of in order to put an end to the ISIS threat. We are pleased to announce that very soon we're about to deploy the Jihadist Undermining Destroyer Infiltrating Sentinel Goat Drone, or Judas Goat for short, with a futuristic AI operating system and an authentic external appearance, the Judas Goat is literally indistinguishable from an actual live goat. Powered by the newest quantum Tesla technology, when an ISIS member inserts their slick willy into the back-end interface port of the apparatus, the Judas Goat delivers a lethal 100 amperes of electrical charge directly into the central nervous system of the offending terrorist, resulting in zero collateral damage. Oh, mm, holy Allah Akbar! Oh, such a hard, exhausting day! Killing little babies and beating women! Ooh. Oh, oh, I need to wind down and relax and get my dick wet! Oh, there's a nice one over there, yes. Oh, oh, come here, baby. Oh, oh, I got something for you. Oh, I gonna stick my god missile into your little Paris opening there, yes. Oh, here comes daddy. Oh, you're... <laughs> The Judas Goat will then automatically protect its cover and run directly into the nearest herd of goats. With its fiber optic adaptive fur, its chameleon capabilities allow it to change its color hue to match with the surrounding goats. Lockheed Martin strives for excellence in its continued efforts to combat global terrorism. As Vladimir Putin once said, it's God's job to forgive the terrorists, but it's our job to send them to him. Just like, just like to totally shift the world doesn't take the majority of people waking up. Um, Cryon says it, it, it'll take, um, you know, um, less than, than one half of 1% of the human population in order to shift the world. And if anybody's looking at that, like, oh, that's some airy-fairy woo-woo in just someone's opinion. No, it's actually historical fact. Um, if you look at any successful revolution that's ever taken place, whether you're talking about the, the American Revolution or, you know, or anything like that, um, less than 3% of the population actually participated, and the rest were oblivious to the fact that it even happened. They found out about it after the fact. All the revolutions throughout history and uh, all wars throughout history have commonalities. All wars have been won by tactics and technology. Okay? And all revolutions have been won by a tiny fraction of the population who would not give up. So that, that about, that about, you know, I mean, it's, it's 3% or less when you're looking at a tiny population, like the size of the population of the United States in, you know, 1776. Um, but when you're talking about, you know, billions of people, then yeah, you know, um, less than, than um, half of 1% of the population is tens of millions of people, if not hundreds of millions of people. So this is still not a tiny number. It's just, it's tiny relative to the total population. So the point is, is everybody doesn't need to wake up. Um, you might say that, that instead of looking at things in terms of the 99% versus the, uh, the 1%, you might say there's a 1% and a 1% and then a 98%. There's the 1% globalist, sociopathic, psychopathic Wall Street elites that control everything. And then there's the 1% that needs to wake up and use their power to defeat that other 